we are on the line. We are live right now. I know some of you may not be on yet, but I have missionary Annie McKnight Warren with us on today, the, T the founder of TK Breast Cancer Foundation. And so we're here today and we're going to share some things regarding cancer awareness, her story, uh, how you can support. Listen, I am so excited to be on the line today with my Take Charge movement. Listen, this is just the beginning. We're going from city to city, state to state, and eventually out of the country. And we're going to share with other women how that they, they have overcame and, and how you can overcome and whatever they've been through. We know that other people have been through it. That's how I got started uh, with the Take Charge movement because I went through a sickness. And after the sickness, the Lord said, now I've strengthened you. I need you to go back and get somebody else. And so that's where the Take Charge movement started. And I decided this year that I was going to get women from different areas of life, uh, divorce, married, uh, abused, or whatever it is, and so that they can share their story with the world so that someone can be helped. So we're going to wait for a few more people to come on the line. I'm so excited about today. And we need you to share, invite all uh, your friends. Listen, and I know uh, before I introduce this woman to God, I know that many of you either had somebody that's dealing with breast cancer or you dealt with breast cancer because in my family, I've had uh, family members to pass from breast cancer. And so uh, I have a little story I'm going to tell later also, a little scare that I had, but God got me through it. And even though some people may say, well, October is breast cancer awareness. Listen, anytime is breast cancer awareness. It does not wait till October to attack your body, to attack you. And so now uh, we're just, we're starting off early. We're getting it going early. So uh, Missionary Annie, we want to say hi to the people. Hello, blessings to you all this morning. It's an awesome day and we thank God for another day and for his grace and it's mercy and I'm only grateful for the invite from Lady Watson. I'm uh, expecting great things uh, for the Take Charge movement and I pray that she continue this for many, many years to come because all I see is God in this and I thank God today for her. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me on this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm so excited. Um, so I'm going to get started. It's finally on my page. It's just taking a little longer than I thought. <laughs> I will figure this thing out before it's over with. I'll tell you, it will not get the best of me. Technology. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. we're ready. We're ready to start. I want to introduce this woman of God. I tell you, I met her years ago uh, through some good friends. She's the uh, mother of Lady Buchanan. And um, I tell you, she is a great woman of God. When I first met her, she had a sweet spirit, still does, and um, she's been doing this foundation for a while, so I'm going to let her uh, discuss it. Missionary Annie McKnight Wynn is a certified life coach. She is also a member of the Louisiana Coalition of African American Breast Cancer Su Survivors. Her foundation mission is to inspire, comfort, and support. She's located in Louisiana in Amy, Louisiana. And so I'm going to let her tell a little bit about her foundation. Hi. First of all, I think she's already introduced me. My name is Annie McKnight Brand. Uh, I started the foundation in 2012. Uh, it took me almost 17 years to answer to the call of God. Wow. And so we all know that our disobedience sometimes gets us in trouble with God, but um, we have to land on our feet and do what God has called us to do. If we never do, we will never get to our purpose where God wants us to be and the fullness thereof that's in it. And I thank God for that today. I thank God for my obedience. Even though it took me 17 years, I'm here today and God, he waited on me. And I thank God for that. Um, wow. The foundation was actually built um, upon God's calling again and again. Uh, it was because it had affected my family so prevalently. And so uh, I definitely wanted to answer God's calling and do his will and be able to serve his people. 
Right. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And I believe that people have been blessed because one year uh, I was able to walk in the uh, walkathon. Yes, one year. yes. I was yes. blessed. And it was amazing. And the testimonies and uh, the encouraging words, you know, and the, the love that was shown amongst women, because a lot of times you see women being a little catty. But I tell you, there was love that was shown, and uh, that, that was just amazing. And I'm praying that I'll be able to uh, come again one year whenever all this is over and participate again uh, in the walk. Yes. So <clears throat> when did God, we talked about a little bit about it, but I want you to go a little deeper. When did God give you the vision for your foundation? And you said it took 17 years for you to act on it. But when he gave you the vision, did you believe that it was for you or it was just for somebody else? <laughs> I believe that it was for me because through um, my sister, uh, 1995 was the year that God actually spoke so loudly through her. Um, she had been in remission and this uh, year she uh, came out of remission and the doctors gave us uh, no hope, but we trusted in God. Um, but somehow she knew that she wanted a movement to start. Wow. Talking to me at the final ends of her life, she was saying things that a lot of things don't make sense to us when people are saying, but we have to be spiritually bound and understand that God is speaking spiritually. And she'd always say to me, uh, don't ever forget about me. She started making life changes in her life that affected my life. Because remember, my sister was my best friend and we shared right. so many things together and some negative things and some positive things. But through it all, at the end, she knew that God uh, was who she had to meet at the end of all of this. And so her life changed. She began to make some changes and call up some people and do some things that, that profoundly affected me in such a way. Uh, I had to get to myself and, and really hear the voice of God speaking through her and realizing what she wanted me to do. But most of all, what she was speaking to me because God had spoke to her heart. Um, and so with that being said, I realized when she said, don't ever forget about me, her life was over and she knew that it was coming to an end, but she knew that I could take charge and I could wow. help somebody along the way. And so she was actually telling me that God wanted me to do something and he wanted me to do something quickly, even though I wasn't obedient and it took me 17 <laughs> years. <laughs> The one thing I know about God, he never leaves you alone until you do what he asks you to do. And so obedience is the way. And through her voice, I heard the call from God and said, step out and, and do something. And so I took charge and I That's started right. to serve God's people. And I started to serve God's women who, would, who needed the help and support. And it has been profoundly um, such overwhelming in my life. I thank God for it. It has blessed me. Uh, so many in so many ways and it's not always financially it's, it's not about financially because everything that the foundation is built on it's about giving it's about serving god's people absolutely um and so you know i always say if my my living won't be in vain if i could help somebody along the way and it's also part of my mission because i don't want my living to be in vain i remember that god done the most and he's still serving us today whether we know it or not God is a servant. And so we have to be that example and live the life that he set before us. Wow. That's, I mean, that's, that's awesome. That is so awesome. And that, that's what this, this is about taking charge because when uh, I started in 2014, but actually it was, I think 2002, uh, well, no, 2003 when I had my uh, experience. So it took me 11 years <laughs> <laughs> to, to actually step out and uh, yeah. say, you know what? It's not even about you. This is not about you. Yeah. This is about helping somebody else. And I believe your yeah. foundation has been a blessing, not just to the community and the parish, but to the state. And it will be a blessing to the world. Thank so you. So where Thank did you. the name come from? Where do you get the name TK Foundation? <clears throat> My sister's name was Tommy K. However, oh. I called her... <laughs> However, I called her Time was my nickname, but 
all of her classmates, uh, everybody she knew called her TK. Her name was Tommy K. And so that's where the name originates from. Wow, that's awesome. So like you said, her memory will, will ever be uh, remembered. You're going to remember her, you know, when they see that TK. Uh, and yes. I love that. That is awesome. So is Thank there you. a testimony you would like to share regarding oh. your journey? Yes. Um, in 2017, I partnered with one of my committee members and doing a back to school drive for the children. It was, I think it was August, um, probably, probably the first of August. Um, and she asked me to partner with her. And, and so we got together and we gave out, I think approximately 350 book bags and all of the above to go with the kids to go back to school. And along, I set up on site with some t uh, TKT shirts and we served food to the public. It, it was just an awesome thing to do. And we all just had so much fun and we met so many people playing with the kids and hearing their new endeavors of what they wanted to do for the new school year. It was certainly a blessing. But in the midst of that, um, I went to the concession where we had set up for, to serve food and there were so many people sitting there waiting to order food and the committee was working as quickly as possible. But there was this young man that was sitting as I walked into the concession. And as I walked by him, I felt this heaviness. It was so heavy. Wow. Um, I just felt a burden on me. And I turned around and I looked at him because the spirit between mine and his kind of captivated each other. He looked at me and I looked at him and my eyes began to just engulf with water and I had to remove myself quickly. Wow. And I remember I remember one of the committee members coming and saying, Miss Annie, are you okay? And I really, I really couldn't talk. I couldn't say anything. I, I said, you know, I just kind of brushed her away and I rushed myself to the restroom. And I went into the restroom and I began to pray. And God began to show me the heaviness that was that was up on me is because this young man had lost his wife to cancer. Wow. He had, three, he had three little girls that was there with him and he was feeding them pickles and chips and, and it, it broke me to not have ever seen him before in my life and for God to show me his brokenness. My God. Is when I realized God really wanted me to take this journey and be a support to his people because everything I do is for the glory of God. I will never ever take anything that I do, uh, share with other people, the knowledge, anything that I do, it will always be for the glory of God. And at that moment, I'm talking to myself and I'm praying in the bathroom and this little girl, and I, I thought, I really thought I was in the bathroom by myself. This little girl catches my hand and she says, don't cry. Wow. It's going to be okay. And she scared the life out of me because I honestly thought I was in the restroom by myself. And from that, I remember the scripture, Matthew 21 and 16. It says, do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him, yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants? Lord, have you called forth your praise? And I began to praise God at that moment like never before. And I told God, yes. I said, yes, God, yes to your will and yes to your way. Why Forever in my life, I will always be able to hear your calling. I will always be adherent to what you want me to do. And I will always be blessing other people's. And I thank God for that moment because that was oh, a wow. profound moment in my life. Yes. And talking about it just gives me tears because I never seen that man before in my life. Wow. Never, ever seen him before in my life. <laughs> I did ask someone, I said, do you all know that young man that's sitting there? And that's how I found out all the information. They said, yeah, that's Mr. So-and-so. And he lost his wife to cancer just last year. And those are his three children. And uh, I was speechless. I truly was speechless. So that was the moment that I really knew God wanted me to do what I'm doing today. Wow. I mean, that's, a, that's an awesome testimony. I mean... Uh, especially, you know, with the little girl. I mean, wow, that's just amazing. 
uh, who God was sin, you know, yeah. and what it would do to touch our lives to impact other people's lives. So I thank and praise God for your testimony. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, with my uh, take charge, before we move any, any further, um, it's just that once I went through so many different things, and people seen some of the things that I went through and they begin to either text me or inbox me or say, hey, I have a friend that I need you to talk to. That really motivated me because somebody mm. wanted to hear my story. Somebody wanted to see how in the world I watched you crumble. I watched the things mm. fall before you, but you still stood, stood tall. How did you do that? How did you keep your integrity? How did you keep your character intact? And I would let them know it's nobody but God. And so yeah. we have a responsibility, the ones that have been overcame uh, with our testimonies, we have a responsibility to give back to other women because there are people that are hurting. Even men, they are hurting. There are children, especially right now, that are hurting and don't know which way to go because we must understand that even though people are getting the coronavirus and we're praying for, for the world, even ourselves, but... There are other things, you know, cancer didn't stop because the, corona, the coronavirus came, high yeah. blood pressure, diabetes, none of that didn't stop. And so we still have a responsibility to take charge, get our communities back, you know, talk to our young girls, let them be aware of, you know, the realistic uh, realities of what's really going on, especially uh, in our bodies. And I'm going to tell my part and then I'm going to let you finish up. I was about 33 yeah. years old, and I was looking in the mirror. Well, back then, um, about 18 years ago, they said they didn't want to do the breast cancer uh, test until the mammogram, until you're 40. Well, I was about 33 years old, and I found some lumps, not just one, but several, and, and it, uh, it, was, it was a lot. And so when I went, they first didn't want to do it, but once they tested uh, they began to move fast. I had a biopsy. Uh, they wasn't sure if it was cancerous. They took it out. Thank the Lord that it wasn't. But Thank as I Jesus. said before, breast cancer is in our family. So they took it out. And from then on, I've been monitoring it, going to my appointments once a year uh, to make sure that there are no more problems. And so I had a few scares here and there, but the Lord uh, has blessed me that I did not have it, but some people were, were not as fortunate. So I suggest, Amen. I tell you, it doesn't matter how old you are, you need to do that test. And if there's anything inside your body that does not seem right, we need to get, get it checked out. We need Amen. to get it checked out. Amen. So I just, you know, I thank and praise God for that. So let's go to the next question. It's not about me today, but let me see what I got <laughs> now. This computer, I tell you, not going to let it get me. All right. Do you feel that you have made an impact in the lives of women that have crossed your path? Yes. Uh, and I thank God for it. I thank God that it teaches me how to love and expect nothing. How to accept humility and move on because wow. God was humiliated. Even when stumbling blocks are put in my way, it, it, it teaches me to press toward the mark that God has called me to be. Even when there's no support, God has always showed up when I needed him most. Amen. And it teaches me that if he has called me to it, he will give me everything that I need to serve his people. So I'm grateful for God because I keep my eye on the prize because if I decide to look anyplace else, then I'm in trouble. But if I Amen. keep my eyes on God, that's that's the most important thing God has taught me in this season, to keep my eyes on him. Not people, not things, not material things, because at the end of the day, I have to stand before God. I have to bow and I have to speak and I cannot lie to God. So this journey has taught me that this is not about me and it's not about people, but it's about serving God's people so that he'll get the glory and not me. That's right. And Amen. 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 And just like you said, if it's just one, if it's yes. just one, praise God, you know, and so that's what we have to focus on. 
you know, uh, Pastor Watson did on uh, Thursday night, the invisible audience. And what he mm -hmm. was saying was, listen, it doesn't matter who's watching. God is watching and God remembers. And so yes. everything that you're doing for the kingdom, God sees it. Woo! I'm excited about yes. that. You know, he see it <laughs> yes. when nobody else see it. He see the tears. He see the burden mm. that you have for the people. He see the joy mm. that you have when somebody's help. Wow. So we just, hey, that's what we yeah. just need to focus on. What did God tell you to do? And that's for somebody today. I'm going to get off a yes. little bit. What is God <laughs> telling you to do? It's time to Amen. take charge. This is the time. It's not about money. It's not about followers. It's about obeying the Lord. And when you obey the Lord, mm. woo, they say the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's where I get strength yes. from. Amen. From the Lord. Yes. So I have one yes. more question and then we're going to share about how you can be a blessing to this foundation. Where do you see yourself regarding your foundation in the next five years? In the next five years, I, I don't like to put a timing on God because God's timing <laughs> is not my timing. But my hope and my faith, one day I'd like to own a mobile mammography. Wow. With the name of TK, trusting in God for that, that vision that will come true, that I can go around the world, um, and just offer free mammograms and free screenings to those who are, are, are less fortunate than, than some others. That's my hope and that's my dream. And I pray for that on a daily basis. I ask you to pray for me with that because I know God is a big God and there's nothing impossible that he cannot do. Wow. That's amazing. Well, we're going to pray for that. Listen, I want to be a part of that. I'm going to pray that the Lord bless me so I can have... Listen, I want to be able to afford one of those trucks. And I say one of those trucks because it's going to be more than one. I believe Absolutely. that in Jesus' name because we need that, especially uh, in our community. Mm. Our community yes. is, is really not aware of what, you know, about our health. I'm going to say that. Uh, and I know you mm. and, and, and a lot of other, other ones of us, we pay so much for insurance. And then with paying for insurance, and then when you go there, you still got this deductible and this copay. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, what did I yeah. pay $700 a month for? <laughs> and so a lot of people in the community are not able to get insurance. And so Amen. they don't go to the doctor until it's pretty much too late. That's and right. So, That's uh, right. And then the appointments are so far uh, out once they do find out that you have something. It's different when you have insurance. And so... That's something um, I'm going to be praying about and, and praying that the Lord bless me, that I could be a part of that because breast cancer has affected my family. And so Thank even you. if it had, it's just still the community. It's still the right thing to do to, to give back, especially after the Lord has blessed you, even if it's 5 or $10. I'm asking Amen. you today to go to uh, Missionary Annie Wynn, McKnight, I'm sorry, McKnight Wynn's page, and the TK Foundation Breast Cancer page that's on Facebook. And she has some PayPal information about her shirts that's coming out. She won't be able to do her walk this year because of social distancing. But she's got some other stuff going on. It's on her page, the TK Foundation Breast Cancer. Go to her page. Go to Miss Annie's page today. And I need you to sow into that ministry on today this is not for me it's not for her it's to help this is actually about the kingdom it's about the kingdom Amen. it's about building up the kingdom of god and listen if we're not healthy we can't do it if we're not able to go out we, there's only so much that we could do and so i'm asking you today uh from me that you would give uh right now you might can't see it but i'm repping a shirt from a few years back to who that breast cancer uh, shirt, but she has some shirts that's coming out this year and I will be getting one, probably a few of them. Matter of fact, I'll be getting a few for my family members because like I said, I've had family members that have passed. This is a great cause, y'all. This is a great cause. And I'm not coming on here asking for money. I'm asking to be a part of the movement. I'm asking you to give back. I'm asking you to go get tested. I'm asking you to be aware of your body 
And it's just not breast cancer. There's other things we need to be aware of, but that's what we're talking about today. So, uh, Missionary, do you have anything else you want to add on today? Yes, I like to tell every woman, and not only women, men too, one in eight women will be affected by breast cancer. So if you if you have 16 people in your home visiting, know that two of them will be affected by breast cancer during a year's time. Um, I'd also like to let you know, never, never let fear take over taking care of your health. Go get a mammogram once a year. 40 years, when you're at 40 years, please go get your mammogram. If you have genetics in your family, uh, get on a breast specialist. They will test you. They will do, do a BRAC test. They will, that's a genetic test. They will test, test you and let you know if you have breast cancer genes in your body. There are so many technologies out there today that can offset this thing. It doesn't have to take your sister's life. It doesn't have to take your brother's life. You can jump in front of fear and take charge of your life. I promise you, if you take charge of your life, God will do the rest. Do not let fear take over because fear gets us in trouble every time. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, it will. And and it, it, it has, um, you know, each year when I go or if I feel something, I do get a little worried, but you know, we have to cast down that imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. And so fear is the one of the things that we need to cast down and, and listen, bring it into captivity and say, listen, yes. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love and a strong mind. But at the same time, we need to take care of ourselves. We, Amen. Have, to, Amen. we have to get checked. We have to get checked no matter what. So I Amen. thank and praise God for you coming on the line with me tonight. Listen, this is not the first time that you're going to be with me. We're coming. We're going <laughs> to come you. back in October and we're going to share some more because I know um, you was a part of the Susan G uh, Foundation once. You you did the march there. Um, yes, Susan G come and asked me to be the ambassador for Tashville Parish. So I actually done a, a video snippet for them and it was challenging but it got the information out to uh, 21 parishes. It was a 21 parish video that, that was seen in 21 parishes. And I, from the little town of Amy, was selected and I give God all glory for that. Uh, I thank God for that. And so I'm looking for many, many, many more things, good things to happen for the glory of God. So that was just one of them. And, and I'm still on the movement. Um, I have clients that, that are in need. Uh, I go out and do whatever I need for those clients and their family members. And so TK Foundation is, is, is on the move. We have a committee. They work really hard. And I just thank God for all those who have supported. I thank God for the sponsorships that have been um, actually poured into the TK Foundation's uh, life. And so we're just grateful for it all. We, we really are big or small. We're just grateful. We're grateful. We see God's moving and he's doing big things and to God be the glory again, because we cannot do anything without God. And we are so grateful for God. Wow. We truly are. We're grateful. Yes. Yes. Nothing without God, but we can do all things. Like you said, with God. Wow. Yes. I'm so yes. excited. I'm so excited. And I am so grateful that, uh, you, you know, took the invitation to come on with me on today. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes. When we first woke yes. up about five o'clock, oh, it was storming. The lights was blinking. It was horrible here. I'm like, are they, did they not tell us that a storm was coming? <laughs> and um, it was getting worse and worse. And I uh, texted you and we prayed like, listen, this has to be said today. We cannot postpone it. We're going to do this today. And if the lights Amen. go out, we got to keep going. So Amen. the Lord Amen. has blessed again. So I thank God for everyone for tuning in to this Take Charge moment slash movement that we're doing. I'll be back on next week with my spiritual mother, uh, prophetess Monica Lewis, and uh, with her, uh, can't think right now, oh, my mind and then slip. But anyway, <laughs> help a sister out uh, with talking about that and, and the movement that she's doing with helping a sister out next week. But I thank and praise God for Missionary for being on the line with me today. Listen, you guys, it's going to be more to come. And we have to stick together. That's right. We have to stick together. Amen. And I love you. Amen. And I thank you for coming in. You kiss the family for me. Tell them I love I them. And you enjoy your stay. Love you. Thank talk you. To you later. Goodbye, Blessings. everyone. Bye-bye. Jesus first. <laughs>